Good morning, this is Trey, and I'm with Student Elite. So, before we get into today's interview, yes, it's special because it's an interview, let me do my little thing that I normally do. So, today I'm going to wear a hat that's not actually involved with cigars, but it's from my home state. So, I always have to represent my home state of Ohio, the Ohio state. Now that I'm set, let's go ahead and bring on our special guest. Morning, Trey. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we have with us today, Mr. Troy Benny. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Beautiful day. Ohio State's on the TV. They are on the TV and we're not losing at this point. Yes, we're not losing <laughs> at this point. <laughs> right. <laughs> So we were losing a little bit earlier. I was a little bit scared, whatever. We're not gonna go there because today we're actually gonna be talking about cigars. Do you wanna introduce yourself a little bit? Good morning, everyone. My name is Troy Benny. I'm the uh, owner of Sequoia Cigar here in Visalia, California. And uh, very pleased to have Trey and uh, his podcast kind of emanating from here. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor having him inside the shop with us. So, so thank you for coming down and supporting us. Well, you know what? Um, I really wanna thank you for your support. Um, I mean, it goes both ways. You know, you're supporting me, right? Uh, for getting out the word and, and educating uh, the masses and, and learning and such like that. Um, so I am proud to support Sequoia Cigar here in Visalia as well. Well, you know, as a new owner, and we'll get into that a little later, I'm sure it, it's uh, it's been part of the journey to kind of find my way as we go along as well. So it's it's kind of two newbies that this uh, doing this together. <laughs> The blind leading the blind. Here we go. I love it. I love it. So uh, before we actually start talking uh, and, and, and getting to know who is Troy Benny and what is Sequoia Cigar, do you want to light up a cigar? Let's have a cigar. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, so because you are a shop owner, I'm not going to ask you what you're smoking unless you want to divulge that, but I am having a Coya de Nicaragua Nemo Uno. Very nice, very yes. nice. Yes, yes. And uh, as a shop owner, I uh, I will keep the band. I will turn it if you want to guess the color. Oh, that's fine. Okay. But uh, I don't want to support a particular brand. I want to show favoritism a particular cigar in the shop, uh, just in general. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into some favorites later. But uh, yeah, cool. Let's see if you can figure it out from the back side of the band. Huh. From the back side, it looks like a Maduro. Hmm, interesting. Yes, how about that? <laughs> I love it, I love it. Nice guess. <laughs> so, um, when it comes down to my Lanceros and such, and I mean, is this typical? Would you consider this? I mean, this is a Lancero, correct? It's a little bigger than a Lancero. It's right? Yeah. It's a little larger. What would you call this uh, style of cigar? You know, it could be in the Lonsdale family. Okay. So Lonsdale Lancero is very similar in, in size. But with the Lonsdale, aren't they uh, typically a little bit longer than this as well too? You're in about the same shape. And again, everybody, when you talk Churchills, everybody gets you know the traditional sizes and people cheat a little bit on, on sizes. So Lancero, Lonsdale, I think you're in that same kind of category there. Okay. Oh, let's see. like to kind of savor this one. Right. It's lighter than what I usually like to smoke. It's early. Um, but it is early. It's early. <laughs> <laughs> you already told me, and also the world, who you are. Yeah. Um, we're here in Visalia, California at Sequoia Cigar. But where are you originally from? So much like yourself in uh, Ohio, I, I grew up in Kentucky. So uh, it's a good Midwesterner. And uh, as, as fate would have it, you know, we grew up very, very close to one another. Mm -hmm. uh, probably what hour and a half, two hours apart uh, by car. Yeah, I want to say it was about probably an hour and a half. Yeah, it's about an hour forty five minutes, not even two hours. Right. Yeah. Right. So, still, a, still a Kentucky boy by heart. Uh, you know, my my family still lives back there, and uh, I get to go back a couple times during visit, hang out with friends and family, and it's it's still a lot of fun. I, I enjoy, I enjoy going back. Yes. Yeah. So, so when you go back. Is there any place that you typically like to go back to? Well, you know, there's, there's, we all have old habits, right? Yes. 
and uh, mine just seemed to center around restaurants. So uh, there's a little hole in the wall place called Riverfront Pizza down in Covington, Kentucky. Mm. Fabulous steak hoagie. I'm sure many people know what a steak hoagie is. No. Steak hoagie and fries. Um, again, being Cincinnati area, they're famous for their, their chili, uh, whether it be Skyline or Gold Star or Empress or Camp Washington, you know, on and on. I'm, a, I'm very partial to a Skyline, so. Yes. Now, there has been a lot of debates whether Skyline chili is actually chili or if it's more of a sauce. So you can argue either way. Yes. Uh, it's not a traditional chili in the sense that it's meaty and chunky. Uh, you can actually have Skyline chili through a straw, as crazy as that sounds, as you know. <laughs> Google it or YouTube uh, Skyline chili, get some pictures of it, look at it. Yes. But uh, very light, but very good. Yes. Yes. I, I agree. I agree. So, um, besides the food places, uh, the steak hoagies, the uh, conies, um, is there any like cigar shops back home that you like to frequent or anything? Yeah, there, there's uh, one that I go to quite a bit, uh, Strauss Tobacconist. Uh, Strauss was originally in, in Cincinnati and goes back to, again, the 1920s or 30s, I believe, uh, right in downtown Cincinnati. and. Uh, now they have a satellite store over in Florence, kind of where I'm, I'm from and grew up. So nice selection, nice walk-in humidor and, uh, and friendly folks. As, as you go around this great country and visit cigar shops, that's what you find. Friendly folks everywhere you go. It's a great community. I, I agree. So speaking of, you know, the, the cigar community um, and the great folks that are a part of it, what actually brought you into like the cigar culture itself? And, and was it just the people or, or like I, I want to know what brought you into it? So like anything else when you're when you're, you're kind of young and, and I don't want to say impressionable you, you tend to kind of do what your friends do yeah. right to, to be included or whatever and uh, so we were young probably in our very early 20s mid 20s at, at, at best and uh, you know a couple of guys that started smoking cigars and uh, so I thought you know what I'll give this a shot as well and uh, much like everybody else, when you're young, you're kind of getting started and don't have a lot of money. So you tend to smoke some not good things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Uh, so, you know, the, the Garcia Vegas or the White Owls or the whatever. The Swisher Sweets. The Swisher Sweets of the world. Oof. <laughs> and uh, I, I was honestly about ready to give up. Mm. And uh, a very good friend of mine uh, actually he said to me, you've not had the right cigar yet. And I'm like, hey, I'm all ears. Help, help me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he put a, a Romeo and Juliet, a vintage number four, uh, in my hand. And the lights went on, the gates of heaven opened, and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm in. Now I understand what a cigar is. And then it just becomes part of the culture. You start going, going away from the gas stations and going into a cigar shop and understanding what it takes to make a cigar and just. It, it's been a lifelong journey and experience ever since kind of figured out. So it's really funny that you say that uh, one of the first cigars that changed your life and the trajectory that you're going was a Romeo and Julieta. Mm -hmm. You said vintage number four, was it? Vintage number four. So I don't remember what Romeo and Julieta I had, but it was out there in Iraq. Okay. And it changed my life as far as, eh, yeah. Eh. <laughs> I don't know which one I have though. So, right. so, so I need to try that vintage number four yes. and revisit it and see if that's something that I actually really do enjoy. Very mild, very smooth. Um, just a great, it has some great notes in it and it's just a very easy cigar to smoke. And that's why I liked it because I was very, I was learning. Mm -hmm. So anything hard or heavy uh, didn't strike my profile, but at that time, boy, it just struck a, a great note with me. and. and uh, I've been a Romeo fan ever since. Explain to me like the transformation uh, between going from just being a patron to being a cigar shop owner, a brick and mortar owner. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's kind of a long answer. We'll, we'll keep it short, but you know, I, I was. Oh, you don't have to if you don't want to. No, I, you know, I was in the, in the private industry for a long time. No, no, I'm saying you don't have to keep it short. We oh. can we have all the time in the world. Oh, okay. They'll tune in for us. Okay. All right. <laughs> So anyway, okay. they, they set me back up again. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, I mean, just the transformation going from just um, uh, coming into the cigar culture and 
enjoying as a patron to becoming a cigar shop owner, a brick and mortar owner. Uh, what was that like for you? Yeah, a no, great question. And I've had a great, I've had a great journey, a great career. I've had the opportunity uh, to work all over this great country. Um, I started as a, as a treasury agent very early on in life and uh, kind of settled into the gaming world and uh, gaming casinos really afforded me the opportunity to, to move around. And, and what that did, it, it showed me, it gave me opportunities to either join other cigar clubs mm -hmm. or, or certainly patronize other cigar shops. So you get to understand what works. And then as you go from state to state, city to city, that camaraderie. Mm -hmm. You know that brotherhood that sisterhood that that place that you can go and, and kind of hang out and very early on in life i always had what i called an entrepreneurial spirit but i didn't know what to do with it okay um you know early on you're just starting a career i got out I said work for the treasury you get married you have a house you have a kiddo you got car payments well that entrepreneurial flame really got turned down yeah. right yeah so you know fast forward 30 some years in life and um, you know i kind of got retired early from from a, from a prior job and and all of a sudden that flame kicked back on mm. to, to be an entrepreneur and you know what to do better in life than to, to pair with some things you'd like to do right smoking cigar uh, being able to buy a business and really running casinos being a big part of them it taught you how to run a business be very business minded business focused and uh, while I had never was a, a guest facing type of person in the casino, I always knew the backside how to make it work. Um, I was pretty good at leading teams of individuals. So I thought, you know, if I can pair all these things together mm -hmm. and, and buy a shop, I think I can do this. Oh, wow. And uh, we're about 11 months into this, this, this great journey I've been on and been very blessed. Um, I think we have a great shop here and, and uh, the clientele has really supported me and the changes we've made so i've just it's been an absolute blast for me oh wow. yeah so um one thing i will say um is that this shop it seems like it, it, it runs flawlessly um <laughs> and, and i know that's not the case you know i mean th there's there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes um but you have a really good thing going on here. Yeah. Um, I mean, just just from the selection of cigars that you carry to the warm, um, inviting environment that you uh, cultivated. Um, I mean, the prices, I mean, they're, they're really good for the region. Like, everything about this shop seems to work. Yeah. And, and, and has that been a hard thing to learn is how to make it work? Uh, good question as well. So yes and no. Uh, you know, when I first started, again, successful in, in doing what I did with casinos, but never having done it yourself for yourself. So self belief is, is a big deal. Um, buying a business in the middle of a pandemic, you're either genius or you're crazy, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, so far we're, we're pegging more towards the genius side, but. But really the challenges that came with it was, you know, when I jumped in, you know, supply chain. Okay. And, and cigar industry is no different from anybody else, you know, auto parts or grocery stores or whatever. Supply chain has been an issue. So, you know, what's that old saying when you're a kid, you turn, you know, lemons into lemonade. Mm -hmm. So what I was able to do really was to, to change some of the inventory in the store, uh, some by design and some by you just couldn't get it. So what it really allowed us to do was introduce a lot of new cigar brands okay. and, and really kind of talk to those brands and sticks and get people excited about it. Mm. So, you know, we all have our favorites that one or two or three we always go to. Mm. We always want to expand that. Yes. And, and by introducing these new sticks and getting some, some fire behind us, some enthusiasm behind it, they're like, Man, that's a great cigar. I'm glad you brought that in. Yeah. So lemon is the lemonade. You, you work with what you have. So, so would you say that it's... You're kind of a politician? A little bit. Okay. Or used car salesman, either way. <laughs> or a lawyer. Or a lawyer. And whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, would you? <laughs> I mean, sorry, sorry to all, the, all those folks out there, but yes. sorry. No, yeah. You know. 
you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> but I mean, so, so would you say that there is a lot of politics that come that comes with owning a cigar shop or, or dealing with businesses? Um, is there a lot, little bit of jockeying that goes on? Um, there's there's all kinds of challenges uh, out there, whether it be at the you know county level, state level, or, or federal level. You know, you know the FDA was involved a while ago with you know with the flavor ban. Uh, they kind of backed away from that. Uh, California thought that was a good idea, so they kind of picked that baton up and are and running with it. So, you know, you always have regulations that you have to deal with. Uh, the tax burden in the state of California, you kind of referenced before, you know, pricing for the region. Uh, you know, we had a very large tax increase July first, um, and California ranks in the top three states in the country as far as tax goes on cigars so that's that's a big challenge to overcome uh, you know we just mentioned supply chains um, you know california as a state in general uh, is really not about smoking mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of lobbyists that, that rally against this all the time to to, to kind of make that happen so you know, yeah, there's there's all kinds of challenges. We, you know, we belong to different uh, groups and lobby groups to kind of help us the other way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far we've been pretty successful and, and uh, you know, keeping it going. Nice, that's really good. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, one of the casinos I was working at in, in Nevada, um, I had a gift shop manager, his first name was Pedro. And uh, Pedro invited me to uh, a trade show and it was, it was in Las Vegas, so we went up and and so he was buying all the all the trinkets for the for the gift shops. We had a couple of casinos and three outlets we were, were trying to fill up. Mm -hmm. And we're going through and, and we were looking at some of the what I considered ugliest, cheesiest, nothing I would ever buy or put in my in my home, let alone try to sell. And at one point I kind of stopped Peter. I'm like, dude, what are you what are you doing? Yeah. And he said, Troy, it's not what you like. You, you like what you sell. Okay. Right. So he goes, I know what my customers look for when they come to shop in our stores. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with me and what I like. What I like to do is put things in the shop that I know my customers will like to buy. And he goes, you just learn that over time. Okay. So, you know, whether it be price point or, or size, remember a lot of these people are traveling, mm -hmm. right? So size has a lot to do with it. How portable is it to get it back home? Or, whatever but there was all these criteria that he used and uh, what an invaluable lesson and to your point do I have trophy cigars in there look we all have favorites one or two of them might be in there but I had one of, one of our customers he he said to me he said hey can you bring in you know XYZ cigar and I'm like sure and uh, so we brought it in and I had a couple boxes to back it up and he's like I mentioned to you one time you think you could get this cigar because not only did you bring it in you brought in you know reinforcements and uh, and it's been a great cigar for us so again listening to your customers mm -hmm. you know um, we can't be everything to everybody of course size is, is you know a restriction yeah. but you know in the back of your head that cigar that he likes there's other people gonna like it too it's a good brand it's a good stick yeah. and we've been successful with that so we we've, we've done that and uh, it's it's their shop it's I'm just I'm just a curator, right? right? It's yeah. everybody's shop. So, have you had any inspirations, or, or I mean, I know we all have had inspirations, but has anyone really been inspirational in your life? Has anybody um, really reinforced or helped create that spark for you uh, to bring you to the point that you're at right now? So, you know, two people, you know, uh, more recently, uh, Micah Johnson, uh, who owns Cigars Limited up in, in Fresno, California, has been uh, very first a great friend. Uh, I patronized his shop before I, I bought mine. And, you know, we used to pick each other's brains just all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, because he knew what I did and, and I enjoyed cigars. So we just, we talked, we just talked business, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, He's just a great guy. And then when I went to him and said, hey, I'm thinking about buying this cigar shop, what do you think? And he became an instant mentor for me and uh, really helped me through you know, the evaluation process, the buying process. And then really once I got going, 
we just talked. I mean, we would have a weekly meeting and just we would just talk all the time. So um, great friend, great mentor, great, great inspiration. You know, and I mean, obviously you go back to your parents and, and I'll give a specific shout out to my father. And uh, my father is a, is, uh, is a great daddy. He turns 80 here very soon. And, uh, you know, one of the most valuable lessons he always taught me, he was always there. You know, he was always on the present in my life and, and uh, was very helpful and encouraging. But what he really taught me was, was how to compete. Mm. Um, when we were kids, my brother and I, uh, we couldn't beat my dad. You know, whether it be, you know, horse or basketball or ping pong or pool or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, he, he beat us like a drum. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I, I think that's, that's a great life lesson. He, and he used to tell us all the time, when you're good enough, you'll be. Yes. yes. And not in a mean-spirited no. way, but in yes. an encouraging way. Yes. Right? So that first time when you beat your pop, it's something that sense of accomplishment that I can do this. I can do it. Correct. It wasn't just given to you. Correct. You found that internal yes. strength to actually overcome whatever adversity was there. Yes. So there it is. The seed was planted at a very early age, right? Mm -hmm. And here it cultivated and, and, and grew into, into this great opportunity I have in front of me. Wow. So it, it's funny, uh, <laughs> not to steal, you know, the show from this interview from you. Sure. Or anything, but um, I have a nephew. Um, my, me and my wife, uh, it's on her side. Sure. And uh, we would play Mortal Kombat on the PS4. Mm -hmm. And no, oh, I would not just let him win. No, we are playing, and you're going to beat me. Right. And I think he beat me once. No, he beat her. He hasn't beat me yet. Okay. But eventually, if he ever watches this in the future, he'll remember. When we used to play back home in Ohio, sure. Uh, and like you said, it's just that um, it wasn't mean spirited or anything no. like that. We were having a good time. He was having a good time. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, nothing. You, you don't appreciate anything. It's just handed to you, mm -hmm. right? Hard work, dedication um, goes so far. And then once you achieve, you get that little taste of success. It's so much sweeter. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's it's this is real life. This is happening. So. There's, there's lessons I learned and then, you know, put on top with Mike have, have just been so invaluable to me. So um, when we're talking about um, the mentorship aspect um, and your father, Micah, um, has anybody told you that you've kind of been a mentor to them? Have you reached out to... Um, I'm sure that you have other friends and such like that as well too, but has anyone ever told you that you're a mentor? Yes, and, and I don't know if we've really, if they've used that word specifically or not, but again, much like my dad did for me and instilled in me to, to be there, right? To be present, uh, to be that good friend, uh, to be a good listener. So I think I think things just organically happen. So, you know, as, as you, grow with individuals and, and become better friends, uh, and, or even through colleagues, uh, through at work. Uh, it's, you know, you, you want people to aspire to be able to achieve what you've achieved, mm -hmm. right? I think that goes a long way. And, and of course you help people along the way, because, you know, as you're young and you're, you're, you know, clawing and scratching and trying to get up the corporate ladder, um, once you get there, you see yourself from 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully some of the scars that, you know, I was able to get through my career, mm -hmm. you know, you can pass those on to people and, and uh, hopefully they can use those as well. So I, I always try to, when asked, yes. to, to share some of that information. Good, nice. So, so if somebody was thinking about getting into business and such like that, um, are there any more nuggets that you would kind of give them or anything or any more advice? Well, you know, be knowledgeable about what you're doing, yeah. right? Don't don't go in blind, of course. Um, the, the passion has to be there. Um, and once you get past all those things, I'm a numbers guy. You've got to run the numbers. Does it make sense? You know, really sit down and be honest with yourself. You know, I always kind of start with, you know, here's my goal here. What if I'm half right? Yeah. 
what does that mean? What if I'm only half right off of that? You know, is it a, is, is it a go, no go type situation? So, you know, be honest with yourself, reach out to as many people as you can in the industry or, or similar industries, and, and just be honest with yourself. Will this work? And I think the biggest thing is don't be afraid of it. You know, uh, once you do it, go all in. And I've been successful being able to do that. Would you be willing to give people a tour of your shop? Oh, sure. You know, I, when people come in, you know, you welcome them in, of course. Yeah, you welcome to Square Cigar. Can help you find anything. Um, and you, you, you listen to your customer. Your customer is going to tell you what your sheet wants, mm -hmm. right? And um, we, we have a lot of new folks coming into the store. And uh, it's great to be able to spend some time with them inside the humidor. Um, I took a, a cigar safari a few years ago down to Nicar Nicaragua. We went to the Drew Estate Factory. Oh, wow. So, uh, How was that? It was awesome. A trip of a lifetime. Bucket list kind of trip. And But what... Uh, what I didn't know at the time was, one, I was going to be an owner someday, but I had this, all these catalog of photos and videos. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking to somebody new or emerging in, the, in, the, in this culture, you know, the student of leaf, if you will, you can show those pictures and those videos of people actually hand making cigars in Nicaragua in the factories. And to, to turn those people on and watch their reaction go, wow, this is awesome. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. You're inspiring them and they're like, this is great. Yeah. So, and they're like, man, I know more than, than half my friends. So it, it just goes. Yes. You know, so we kind of impart them with some, some good information. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I know that when people walk into the shop, you're more than well uh, willing to give them a tour. How about our viewers? Absolutely. Right here. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So I know that in the previous videos, I kind of let you down. I said that when I was doing the editing, I would go ahead and put some shots of the shop and everything like that into the video. I dropped the ball on that. My fault. But we're going to get an exclusive from the shop owner and a nice little tour. Wow, there we go. All right. <laughs> Morning, Trey. Come on in. Let's take a tour of Sequoia Cigar. Thank you. Uh, it's kind of kicking off. We offer a selection of uh, all your cutters, lighters, accessories for your cigar smoking experience right here. It looks like you got something for pretty much everybody. Hopefully everybody. Some cutters, lighters. Over here as well, this corner we have our, uh, our pipe accessories, pipe tobaccos, uh, pipes, Savinelli, Peterson, Ferro. We offer about 14 different lines of Lane tobaccos in bulk. Uh, we also offer GLPs and Cornelia and Bell uh, pipe tins as well. Uh, accessories for all your pipe smoking needs. Yeah, a little bit of everything for everybody. We even have a little handy dandy learn how to smoke a pipe pamphlet for all of our newbies out there. So come in, you can learn how to smoke a pipe at Sequoia Cigar. Oh, nice. Right? Yeah, that's pretty nice actually. <laughs> right, now let's walk into the humidor real quick. And as you can see in the humidor, we're not the largest humidor in the world, but we like to consider ourselves a nice medium-sized cigar um, place. We have uh, probably all the national brands that people recognize. We don't concentrate a lot on boutique cigars. I know some, uh, some cigar retailers do that. We have a very small selection of boutiques, so we try to focus more on the national brands. And uh, the customers here have let us know over the years that that's what they gravitate towards. So we try to fulfill, you know, all their wants and needs through the through the national brand. So again, pretty extensive collection. We're very happy with what we're able to offer here at Sequoia Cigar. And so I saw that there was a 
little door back here. Is this the secret passageway? It is the secret passageway, yes. We have uh, lockers for, uh, for people who want to become locker members here at Sequoia Cigar. Uh, it's a nice little program for them. It's, uh, it's a year-long contract to sign up. Uh, all the money, of course, that they put into goes back to 100% for purchases here at the, uh, at the shop. Uh, also nice perks, you get a discount on individual sticks as well as box purchases as well. So it's a very nice perk if you're a pretty avid cigar smoker and you like to smoke a lot of cigars, locker membership is definitely the way to go here at Sequoia Cigar. So, Troy, I want to thank you very much for doing this interview with me, um, for educating the other viewers, the listeners of Student of the Leaf. Um, was there any other parting words that you want to say? Or, You know, one, thank you for, for coming here and, and doing this and, and using our shop. Uh, it, it's, been, it's been fun to, to have you in and, and, and your guests in as, as well. Um, it's kind of a neat you know, we can get together and, and do this and, and kind of grow and, you know, it's kind of ironic, you know, well, I've smoked cigars for, you know, 30 years or whatever, you know, your, your journey, the student of the leaf, I kind of feel like that myself as being a, a new owner. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of a student as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, new to ownership, uh, new to running a business, although I have experience in running them, but not my own. So, you know, I'm learning and growing as we go along too. Um, you know, you, you listen to all of your customers in the shop because it's very eclectic mix of people and uh, very business minded individuals. So, you know, conversations take out, you know, throughout the day, uh, you learn things mm -hmm. as you go and, uh, and you try to, to get those little, those little kernels or nuggets, if you will, and, and incorporate it back into your business. So, um, I'm very much a, a student of the business, <laughs> the business of belief. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as we always say, you know, I mean, the cigar culture and the cigar world is ever changing uh, on a day to day best basis, a month to month basis, a year to year basis. Um, there's always something new to learn. Um, and just like you said, same with business. Um, so you have both sides you have the cigar culture that's constantly changing, mm -hmm. then you also have the business where that's constantly changing as well, too. Right. You are a student. I believe. Absolutely. And it's, it's fun. It, right? It is. Yeah. To learn is fun. Uh, to enjoy a cigar is fun. Um, and when you can do it with your friends inside the shops, friends on the back patio, um, however you smoke a cigar, um, it's fun to learn. So, yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you for coming down. Appreciate it. Definitely. So, to all the viewers, all the listeners, uh, please uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, however you watch your vlogs, YouTube, however you listen to your podcast, because we're on Apple, we're on Amazon, um, Spotify, however you get your podcast, you should be able to get it. But continue to learn, continue to enjoy. And remember, we're all students, students of the league.